the timing of what's happening right now is not an accident. It was exactly 99 years ago that the Tulsa massacre happened. We should be outraged now. We should be protesting right now. We should be saying, this cannot happen any more. This cannot happen again. But this is how unhealed trauma works. When there is an, an experience of unhealed, unprocessed trauma, that the body remembers it. When there's an anniversary period that coincides with what the original timing of the trauma was, the body remembers it and the body is inclined to react in all the different ways that it does because it's stored in the nervous system. And this is what's happening now in our country and it should be happening right now. And what's going to stop this from happening again is for white America to get it, to get that our history as a country was founded in this context of colonialism and slavery, where there were collective beyond the individual movements of taking what there was no right to take that includes the land that this country is now considered to be, the United States, and it includes that the whole country has been financed by slavery. It's blood on our hands as a country, and it's a collective task. We are up to it. We have the ability to do it. And what a blessing to be able to look together at what has already happened and by taking it seriously and by expanding our capacity to acknowledge truth and to grieve and to take responsibility for the ways in which we have benefited, who has benefited and who has paid the price. We can do that together so that this stops happening. Deaths of George Floyd and all the ones who've come before him, that this stops now. My name is Lisa Iverson. I'm the director of the Center for Ancestral Blueprints. Trauma is stored in the body and unhealed trauma can have a tendency to recreate itself unknowingly, unconsciously. There's also something called anniversary reactions that commonly occurs in response um, to uh, unhealed trauma. This weekend, um, these, this period of days, the end of May, beginning of June, is the anniversary of the Tulsa massacre that took place in 1921. It's one of the largest race-based um, violent episodes in recent generational history um, in the United States. I want to share a brief clip about this history. Now, today, sadly, is the anniversary of one of the most ominous chapters in American history, a chapter that curiously is not talked about and is rarely taught in schools, the Tulsa race riots. Now, following World War I, Tulsa was recognized nationally for its affluent African-American community known as the Greenwood District. Referred to as Black Wall Street, at the time, it was the wealthiest black community in America. It wouldn't last. On May 30th, 1921, a black man named Dick Rowland was accused of raping a white woman named Sarah Page. The details became increasingly sensationalized to the point that a news article the next day led to an armed confrontation between black and white mobs. Shots were fired and the outnumbered black residents retreated to the Greenwood District. Now, in the early morning hours of June 1st, Greenwood was looted and burned by white rioters. All black residents of Tulsa were incarcerated or interred. Over 6,000 black people were detained at the convention hall and fairgrounds, some for as long as eight days. The death toll was reported at 36, but historians believe the actual number of deaths might be as high as 300, as more than 35 blocks of the district were destroyed. The government, law enforcement, did nothing to stop the looting of the destruction of Greenwood. In fact, 
There have since emerged reports of local government involvement in the terrorism. Many survivors describe planes dropping balls of turpentine onto roofs below. Now, what was once a thriving, self-sufficient community was reduced to smoldering ruins over a two-day period. In the end, the riots were attributed to the black community and no one was ever convicted or charged for the deaths, injuries, or property damage. Now, I mention this today because for years, the media and politicians of Tulsa and Oklahoma have refused to mention it at all. And though racial violence in this country isn't new to me, such blatant attempts to whitewash history really was. As the saying goes, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. Let's not be afraid to learn the lessons from our past. Get up, DC. In the days ahead, I encourage all of us to turn toward the John Hope Franklin um, Center for Reconciliation based in Tulsa. They offer a wealth of education about the history of uh, the Tulsa massacre. There's also an online symposium happening right now. It started last Wednesday. It goes until this um, coming Tuesday. Sessions are recorded and are available for a year.